Okay, if you want to become a successful entrepreneur, uh, you must have knowledge. Betul tak? You mesti ada kepandaian, uh, kebolehan, tahu bahasa bisnes tu, tahu bahasa berniaga. Uh, you must know how to keep the financial uh, means. Semua kena tahu. Kalau tak ada knowledge, you tak boleh berniaga. Uh, and then, you must have vision. Uh, you mesti tahu apa yang you nak buat uh, 10 tahun, 20 tahun akan datang How big is where Whether you can achieve it is a different story But when you start any business You must have vision where you want to go from here How big your company you want to go Okay uh, Entrepreneur is one thing uh, You must have natural talent Banyak orang uh, Belajar pasal peniaga semua tetapi dia tak jadi orang kaya Tak jadi, tak boleh buat bisnes uh, Orang-orang ni uh, Kebanyakan di mana Dia tahu semua ilmu uh, How to do bisnes uh, Macam mana nak jadi uh, apa Perniagaan tu boleh Butong, berlipat ganda Semua dia tahu Tapi dia tak berniaga Dia ingat di mana orang tu University. University There's a lot of lecturers Right uh, Uh, Profesor semua tahu bahasa bisnes Tapi dia tak berani pergi berniaga uh, Untuk berniaga ni Dia must have talent Sometimes dia tak ada pun PhD apa But It's very smart Orangnya kawan Melayu kelemahan dia berniaga Dia tak ada duit Mengharapkan, setiasa mengharapkan Dari bantuan kerajaan Sepanjang-panjang masa Minta kerajaan bantu uh, Daripada grant daripada apa tu segala-gala lah minta kerajaan bantu tapi bila fail salahkan kerajaan salahkan kerajaan so these are the dilemma for orang Melayu uh, tapi bila dia dah berjaya orang Melayu semua dia tak mau tolong uh, so you kalau nak start niaga macam mana pun you must have your own capital at least to roll it bagi gaji orang semua for the time being until you dah dah besar sikit you minta kerajaan ke mana ke ambil loan ke but basically you must have your own money first baru you boleh develop your business you boleh suka hati you nak buat macam mana kalau you mengharapkan bantuan uh, apa tu skim-skim bantuan untuk meniaga ni biasanya siapa yang bagi bantuan tu dia akan masuk campur Uh, they set the direction where you have to go Okay And the last thing You must have courage uh, Sekarang kena kutuk kat Facebook lah, Terus patah semangat tak mahu. Sekarang senang kat Facebook aja. People can kill your business on the Facebook uh, Nak buka apa Laundry untuk orang Islam je Dah kena kutuk So tak buat business tu uh, This are the thing Yang you kena belajar You must have courage I sebenarnya graduated as a petroleum engineer from UTM. Uh, I didn't get first class honor. Lulu pun cukup makan dia. Second lower. <laughs> Scrap through je. But I become a petroleum engineer. So, because the last time I was sponsored by Petronas, keluar je kena kerja dengan Petronas. So, I worked 10 years in Petronas dari Gali. Uh, setahun di Kuala Lumpur Dan selebihnya di Miri, Sarawak uh, So, I'm a petroleum engineer Lepas 10 tahun Contract habis dengan Cari Kali, dengan Petronas I quit I berhenti Then I join a contract A company Which doing maintenance for the oil platform Semua platform kat Malaysia ni That company was doing the maintenance So I become the MD Company tu kecil je In the, At that time uh, When I joined uh, you, I was invited by the owner Owner to run uh, as a family company uh, Turnover only 8 million a year uh, Contract dia nak habis So when I joined him uh, I become his partner And I set the tone that I want to lead the company You have to follow what I want to do Within 2 years, the turnover was 40 million After 5 years, the turnover was 130 over million So, 
Dia punya staff daripada 200 orang ke 2,000 orang And we are the contractor who service all the platform in Malaysia uh, Whether it's under Shell or under ESO or Cari Gali So it's a huge company But after 10 years uh, When it was successful uh, My partner want to go for listing Dia nak pergi pusat saham kan but I don't want to run a listed company That's when I resigned And I sold off my share So when We started the company in Lekho Park uh, we had, I have a lot of money So I don't depend on all the uh, Bantuan di kerajaan ke kerana. So that's why I'm able to set the tone uh, How we want to shape Lekho Park Okay during my uh, when I was working in Petrona Charigali, there's a lot of knowledge and experience that I gained. First, Charigali is a well structured and they have a well structured and established procedures. Semua uh, syarikat, syarikat kerajaan ni, dia dah ada dia punya structure. Uh, you nak buat apa semua very structured. That's where you learn how the organization should look uh, anything you want to do you have a proper procedure so this is too you belajar as a young engineer i learned a lot of this and then i was assigned to sarawak shell berhad uh, lepas tahun kerja di cai gali cai gali antah di uh, ke sarawak and i work under shell uh, my manager at that time was uh, apa tu Tasi Megat Zahirudin uh, The former chairman of uh, Maybank He used to be my manager uh, At that time he was the manager of Petroleum Engineering in Sarawak Shell So During my tenure in uh, Charigali uh, Then uh, Toward the end of my stay in Charigali I was assigned to head the team take over shell field uh, for Jaragali to operate so I led the team uh. so a lot of things we have to do uh. Uh, Jaragali tak ada staff so we have to train for two years we train before we took over so I'm involved in training uh, local staff young young people then we took over the field uh, I completed the task uh, I think that around 2000 uh, in 1992 Then Chai Gali Until now They are the one who run the Field Then Being a contractor You must know The art of tendering and managing contracts The tendering is always An art You tak boleh uh, buat tender je uh, You ingat you boleh menang There's a lot of things behind it Connecting people, trying to get things, all that eh? So it's an art uh, And then when you get the contract, how to make the contract profitable A lot of people, eh, bila dia dapat contract, beli better Mercedes eh, At the end of the contract period Tak untung Rugi uh, These are the things eh. Those, nanti nak buka syarikat lah eh, uh, jadi contractor uh, is the art of managing the contract to make it profitable. When we got the last contract uh, in 2000, uh, basically all the maintenance of oil back on the whole Malaysia, Sarawak, Shell, uh, ESO and Charigali, we won all the contract. Uh, the value is about 500 million, but the, at the end of the five years, uh, uh, the value is about 1 billion the work we have done. So huge. So, you see, uh, during the the tenure of the tender, uh, how you can increase your revenue? So it's an art. So you must know people, all that. And then uh, I always I always believe in local talent rather than expatriates. A lot of company, uh, be it in, uh, in oil and gas or whatever it is, uh, they always believe to take their expatriates. But I, oh, for me, I always believe that the local can be trained and they can become expert comparable to the expatriate. 
Expatriate ni banyak yang datang ke Asia ni They know how to talk Tapi bukan pandai sangat buat kerja They know how to talk and they know how to sell themselves So Being the owner, you have to be very very careful With these people Who so call themselves expert uh, Kena tipu je banyak Okay So the learning is experience Basically is decision making with calculated risk Because you are the boss You run the business When tendering, uh, there's a lot of gut feel uh, Really you not know how to How to strategize all this uh, is. So you have to make calculated risk uh, Some job uh, You berani aja ambil You tak tahu boleh untung ke tidak lagi uh, So If the risk is bigger Normally the profit is very big Tapi kalau tak jadi You will be banyak So you must know how to uh, Do In a calculated way Okay And then you learn about leadership in business Okay Leadership and business strategy Because I'm the MD uh, I'm influence all my partner So I'm the one who make all the decision And Uh, and then uh, map out uh, how the company want to go what sort of business we want to expand uh, uh, which company we have to go all that okay. so when my company I told you just now when Daya want to go for listing uh, I don't want to run the listed company because listed company is different way of doing it uh, you have to report to SC all that so I told my partner that I'm not going to do it so I resign until they can find somebody to buy my share I will stay at home you pay me full salary so masa tu gaji saya tak banyak lah sebulan 20 ribu eh. duduk rumah je and then I play golf every day for 2 years uh, until I become a single, single handicapper tu kerja saya And then by 2004 some, uh, They managed to find buyer of my share Basically Naim Chandra uh, Nak share kat Shell, uh, Sarawak uh, Then we got a lot of money Bukan sikit tau, banyak, bermillion-million And then uh, my wife say uh, You cannot go on like this uh, Because I play golf every day uh. I'm not going to be a professional player uh. So he said that we must do something uh, Then I asked her what you want to do My wife never worked She graduated from UITM As the, uh, Dalam CIT uh, Cantik Institute of Transport Dia kerja tak sampai uh, setahun gitu lah uh, And then she got married with me and then follow me to uh, Mili So all the while uh, she stay at home We grew up our children without any mate So, she love that kind of work Kadang I pergi offshore 2-3 minggu She never go out from the house She really take care of the children uh, Dan dia gaji membaca Sampai sekarang kalau sok kabar tu memang dia baca sampai habis So, I malam baca dia Dia akan pick up what article for me to read Memang dia minat membaca And uh, one of the things uh, she have talent In doing this kind of work So she wanted to do film uh, She said She can do a better film Than all the producers In Malaysia Because She said Tengok lah film Melayu So she wanted to do uh, I said What make you think You can do a better film Because She kata dia tengok film Nustan She remember She love watching Nustani film Especially the classic one And she said that she can do a good film So that's how it started And so I said, okay uh, One one of the things that I told her You tak takut ke bila kita buat film uh, I'm going to meet all the artists uh. <laughs> Dia kata tak apa She will follow uh, Initially, I wanted to do this normal film We don't know about animation And then uh, so I pun uh, uh, At the time the government uh, 
thinking that uh, elevation is next roof area and uh, MDEC is the one who spearhead the animation industry so they said uh, animation is the thing that we should go so when I look at it uh, yes it's going to be very big especially uh, if you look at Disney uh, the model uh, it's very big Disney uh, so well looking at it it's so open uh, we met a few uh, graduates in animation so we said okay let's go and do animation so I set up a company so I gave the name Last Copy Last Copy itu mana dia when you play cards you always pull the last card and you say Last Copy so you're hoping that you can win the bet so I don't suka my metro uh, so you always say Last Copy so that's why I said, okay, we name it Last Copy. But uh, I asked them to spell like French, La Copa. <laughs> so, if you go to Cannes, Cannes is where the film festival is. So, when the French is looking at it, La Copa. But in the language of French, La Copa is not the so that, that's how it gets started. So, Lego Park uh, was produced, uh, was formed in 2005, December. Uh, we commenced operation in January 2006. Uh, Section 13, uh, we are MSC status. That's pro tahun, MSC status. Uh, when we started, we focused in 3D animation. Animation ni ada banyak jenis lah, ada 2D, ada 3D So we focus on 3D And we said we don't want to take other people's job We don't want to be a contractor We concentrate in producing our own IP Intellectual property uh, Currently we have 180 staff Semua muda Yang tua kat situ hanya saya dengan isteri uh, Lain semua anak muda So when I want to go to any industry, normally I did some studies uh, about the industry. So there are a lot of challenges in creative industry. Eh? In film industry, you say, semua tak boleh naik. At that time, uh, animation also cannot go up. So problem dengan dia ni, any project you want to do uh, about animation uh, is very difficult to evaluate. Macam film juga lah, orang bawa skrip, orang main kita buat film Film ni is going to be a blockbuster So you baca tu You sendiri kena, macam mana you nak evaluate Kalau you nak buat rumah kan senang You calculate di uh, rumah tu dia buat tanah dia di mana uh, Dah tentu lah you tahu boleh jual ke tak boleh jual Tapi film uh, Whether it's animation or uh, Film is very difficult to evaluate so how to manage the, these challenges? Uh? Okay, we have to study uh, why it failed. All this company, uh, that's part of my study. Uh, why it failed. Uh? So I cannot follow their model where we depend on a few people to run the show. So we have to create crystal workforce and safeguard my investment. So what I did is, uh, the initial 12 people I asked them to do the process uh, study and create the animation process for us to produce product over and over again. So it took them about eight months to come up with the pipelines. They put the start, they put the script, sampai animation to grow. So they create the process. So when you put people in this process, you will get the same product over and over. So after eight months doing the R&D, they presented to me the process pipeline. So in any animation studio, a famous animation studio, they have their own pipeline. They have their own system. That's why you can see animation. Uh, you look at the animation, you know, this is Disney. 
I thought this is dream work because the way they produce animation, eh, the process inside, eh, is specific for any company. And in animation company, this is the trade secret. Uh, yang you jaga, you tak bagi orang tahu. What animation boleh? But the process, how you produce it, from A to Z, you tak, tak boleh reveal to uh, So, we develop this first. And then after that, I ask them to produce training module for each process. Kita boleh bawa budak baru, train dan buat proses. Uh, so, bila kita ada all this, I can bring any new staff and we train for each process. And the process will control the schedule. No longer orang jaga schedule. So, hari ni dia datang, this is your task. You must finish by today because if you don't finish, tomorrow, the next process, don't have work to do. So, they are chasing each other. That's why you don't have to look. You siap aja script, bagi aja. you tahu bila nak keluar. At a certain quality. That's why we can survive. So, we've been hit uh, two years later, the core people yang mula kan tu, dia berhenti. Dia buka company dia sendiri. If you don't have this process, your company will collapse. But because we have this process, hari ni dia pergi, besok kita ganti. Tak ada hal. So until now, we can survive. Okay? So, and then the other thing, you nak keluar product, you must study the market. What product they wanted. So, macam MDAC, yeah, they advised me when I started. If you want to come up with animation, you must create animation for the European and American market because they are very big. Betul, it's big. And then I went to Cannes. Cannes too is a place where it's a big market for them to sell. They are like the expo lah. Bulan 4 dan bulan 10. Setahun dua kali. Bulan 4 dengan bulan 10. Bulan 10 ni sekarang. This panggil Midcom. So where it gathers all producers, uh, session TV, uh, semua lah yang distributor. Uh, at that time, we want to see the Minister of Communication ni dekat sana lagi senang daripada sini. Dekat sana dia boleh duduk eh. Apa tu? Minum kopi dengan dia. Uh, dekat sini nak jumpa bersusah. Kalau dia nak jumpa TV3 ke uh, RTM punya pengarah ke di Cannes lagi senang daripada sini. Dekat sini you payah nak jumpa. So I went. I went to Cannes. So tengok macam mana dia orang jual. Macam mana dia produce. Uh, you, tapi you tak boleh jumpa Disney. Because Disney kalau you nak jumpa you must arrange a meeting 6 months earlier. Semua ada. Marvel ada. Disney ada. Dia orang punya pun besar-besar. Tapi nak jumpa perkara dia tak boleh. You kena make arrangement 6 months earlier. So pergilah tengok. Tengok Korea punya pun. Singapore punya pun. Uh, Singapore lagi dahsyat. Dia boleh made in Singapore. Tapi yang buat dia orang Malaysia. Uh, so the marketing dekat sana. Uh, dia boleh buat harap satu kang tu. Dengan kereta. Uh, dia punya produk So So we learn uh, I went there uh, Basically I want to see how What type of animation How they market it uh, It can come up with 22 minutes It can be 7 minutes It can be half an hour So which one you want to market So what are the typical Style you nak buat Cerita apa you nak buat uh, then I went to Korea. Pun seeing the similar thing, and then when I went to Japan, pun tengok benda tu. So MDEC was saying that we have to do something global, baru kita famous. So in the beginning, we wanted to do the film. We wanted to do film. So my I was advised by MDEC people, Aji kalau nak buat film, kena hire orang Hollywood. 
Uh, that was the advice given to me. I said, can you guarantee if I hire Hollywood people, I can get a blockbuster club? Nobody can guarantee. Okay? So I had to de devise uh, my way what I want to do. And then, we want to develop the TV series of Cita Apa yang kita nak jual kan? So, keep on uh, MDAC at that time uh, selalu bawa orang Disney, daripada DreamWorld, daripada overseas give advice to the local animation industry eh. dia ada seminar every year so semua orang nak pergi tengok lah DreamWorld punya expert cakap so they say if you want to come up with a product animation, it must be very specific if your target market is 4 to 12 years the content must be 4 to 12 years baru you boleh pergi jual dia kata and then I tengok lah no way I can sell to America or you pertama animation is about little detail benda-benda yang kecil-kecil orang dekat budak dekat uh, Europe atau dekat Amerika dia korek hidung lain dengan budak Melayu betul tak? Huh? and then in the animation the actor is basically the animator animator ni yang menggerakkan semua animation so dia ni actor so they must know all this little detail so kalau dia pun tak pernah pergi ke Amerika tak pernah belajar ke Amerika banyaknya pun tak dah Kelantan, dah Perak dia tak pernah pergi luar lagi macam mana nak tahu orang nak orang putih tu kuih tu tak boleh so we must come up with our story to be different from others so the other thing yang itu di Amerika atau di Europe at that time children tu dah ada dia orang punya gadget nah, jadi dia akan fokus apa yang dia suka that's why all these people are advising your product must be at a certain age target market, 4 to 12 gitu lah. so content macam tu tapi yang cakap, I cannot sell to America or Europe, so I must hit the Asian market in Asia most of the houses ada satu TV je tak semua dekat most of the Asian the, waktu itulah dekat Asia dia satu rumah satu TV siapa yang pegang remote? ha? budak yang paling kecil dengan mak dia kan? that's why we had to produce product intended for the child but loved by the mother that's what apa tu upin ipin all about cerita dia intended for budak tapi bila yang datang kat saya dia kata anak saya suka sangat cerita bibit lepas tu dia cerita daripada A to Z satu siri kita tanya dia siapa yang nengok dia oh saya pun suka juga <laughs> this are the thing yang membuatkan upin ipin hit dah setahun so I said uh, go and do it so my wife pun kata ok let's do it suruh so, script ni buat nanti dia nak tengok script so dia buatlah cerita berpuasa so apa cerita yang anak-anak muda ni suka taruh dalam berpuasa huh? curi-curi makan bila dia bawa kan my wife my wife punya marah oh buat macam ni semua budak nak ikut <coughs> So, last kali Dia tak kerti Pakai komputer Dan dia tak pernah duduk di kampung Macam mana buat cerita kampung So, saya budak kampung Kenalah menulis Dengan dia So, all the script yang Untuk Ramadan series itu Ada 18 episode Was written by me and my wife Cerita dia Yang Ramadan tu, cerita kampung tu semua Is my story but she's very good in creating 
to make it beautiful in film story. Uh, and my team was very good. Bila dah siap aja script, bagi aja kat dia orang, dia boleh jadikan the good animation. Beautiful shot semua. Memang dia are all talented. So that's how we started. Uh, the first year we make six episodes. Cerita uh, apa tu? Uh, berpuasa. So kita buat uh, first kali introducing puasa. Bila diberitahu uh, puasa itu tak boleh makan dari pagi sampai petang, Upin cakap matilah. <laughs> Ha, itu dialog daripada Hajar And dia nak Satu uh, cash phrase Supaya orang ikut Itu dia taruh Betul-betul-betul Betul-betul tu dari dia Lepas tu bila kita nak record Suara siapa kita nak pakai Opah tak ada orang tua Dia lah jadi opah Sampai sekarang dia jadi opah So, Opa tu suruh dia Tok Dalang tu Dulu I tak buat My friend buat Tapi lepas Empat tahun ni Dia tak mau buat lagi Dia nak jaga cucu So, cari orang tua tak ada Lala, I kena buat Sampai sekarang, I kena jadi Tok Dalang ha, Upin Ipin tu Satu orang budak perempuan saja Dia buat suara Upin dan Ipin Suara Ipin tu kita drop uh, kita drop electronically satu oktif. Uh, yang lain tu semua real voice. Kita suruh dia acting using the normal voice. What we coach kita jaga is the acting. Dia tak baca skrip, dia acting. Kalau kita dengar dia baca skrip ya, macam orang baca skrip kita buang. So, semua pelakon dalam Upi Ipin telah diganti Kecuali Opah Ada beberapa sebab dia ganti One of them, kalau budak lelaki, suara pecah Baru ni kita ganti siapa? Maya ni uh, Tapi, banyak juga yang kita ganti bila mak bapak dia mengolah Ingat anak dia superstar Uh, mulalah dia dah ketik dah Nak hari Sabtu lah Nak hari Ahad lah recording Tapi bila pakai hari Sabtu Oh minggu ni tak boleh uh, I ada orang kahwin Kita punya production tak boleh stop Because every year we produce 42 episode Satu bulan 3 episode masa siap So it's running all the way You bayangkan dia buat 42 episode punya script Setahun Non stop macam macam cerita kena buat It's not easy Until now my wife is the one Who control Walaupun kita ada 12 orang uh, 6 orang Mungkin script uh, Bila dia bagi ya, Dia kata hampir dia Habis dia Dia tukar itu. And she got the natural talent <coughs> So We keep on producing ya. Alhamdulillah dia berjaya Begitu And then we build the brand sir. Upin Ipin tu you and I That's why Upin always on the right Ipin always on the left Because you and I <coughs> So bila mascot kita keluar Dia mesti follow that That's how uh, Disney build their brand Very particular of that And now Kita takkan keluarkan mascot kita Dengan any other cartoons But Kita tak boleh rapat So orang kalau nak buat itu uh, function ke minta uh, kita akan tanya ada mascot lain tak. Kalau dia kata ada, dia kena kau. So because of that we build the brand. Brand kita nampak mahal dan tidak semua uh, undangan kita pergi, kita akan pilih. Jadi bila kita buat macam tu kan kita punya brand nak kena naik. <coughs> Bukan sombong kok, orang kejar. Okay. Bila your staff uh, banyak uh, Young people You must know how to manage them uh, Especially the creative industry 
Banyak syarikat lah Dia punya staff lah Dia kata Dia boleh kerja malam saja. Kerana malam Dia dapat idea uh, But in our company We say it's bullshit You graduated You must work like engineers Like other profession You come to office During office hour Finish your task During office hours And then That's how We can evaluate uh, How you can go How your performance on that So syarikat kami uh, All the time We have a Fixed office hours Very strict office hours And I don't encourage them To work until night Because they must have life Dulu baru masuk Dia masih pujang Tapi lepas tu kahwin Panjangkannya intermarriage Dia kahwin sesama dia So bila dia kahwin sama dia Besok dah ada anak Bila anak sakit Dua-dua hilang So that's the thing you have to manage But because they have been with us for a long time So We have to manage this Team spirit all that So every other year We used to bring the whole team out uh, yeah, Last year we brought them to Langkawi The whole team uh, For our team Kalau tidak uh, dia duduk dalam studio tu Ngadak komputer Setiap hari dia duduk ngadak itu Boring So we have to bring them out Okay The other thing is building the business uh. uh, Animation is about popularity So you must make your product popular Then baru you boleh jual uh, It's not easy uh, In the beginning We use blog To make it popular Kita lucky Because kita buat the first six episode Naik ke uh, TV9 Then people haven't seen Such animation Yang vocal Yang begitu cerita ni sedap So very famous Then in the blog all semua tulis Wah wow, sedap cerita ni Lepas itu pula ada Facebook okay. So uh, Tahun kedua kita keluarkan lagi 18 episod 2008 Eh 12 episod kita keluarkan Then it become big name Upin Pin Semua orang tunggu Upin Pin uh, The other thing We this business We are lucky Because we are in the land of pirates So Bila kita keluarkan Upin Pin Dia menjadi eh, Semua pasal malam jual Upin Pin So my staff uh, Dah tahu Upi Uncle kata Tak boleh jadi ni Habis t-shirt semua Keluar Upi Pin Dekat pasal malam uh. Tu rugi lah uh. And then Semua jual eh. Yang nak episod Apa tu Berpuasa semua jual Sampai dia jual Kat air kat surau <laughs> uh, Pakai kopi lah Bawa bag ni uh, Haji Haji nak ni Upi Pin ni Bagus ni Untuk anak Haji <laughs> Tak ada macam pun punya so. But Because of that uh, Setelah-setelah kata kita rugi jadi Dia tiru semua kan Kata Eh hey, don't be like that You must be proud Because pirate tu Dia akan buat Money yang popular So we are on same level as Hollywood uh, And then we allow Children semua pakai baju tak Baju VPN yang sampai basuh pun tak boleh So we got fanatic all this eh. So by the time our film come out I don't have to spend a lot of money on promotion And film gang tu begitu berjaya Kerana dia dah famous sebelum dia keluar Pasal UB VPN But if you want to know When we wrote the script for gang Watak UB VPN tu hanyalah Bila Uh, watak utama dia Badrul tanya Mana rumah tu Dan dia punya dialog hanya lah tu Itu saja The original script But after we roll out Upin Ipin lah Jadi siri uh, Apa tu berpuasa tu Dan dia become famous uh, Hajar and her team Have to revise The script To include Upin Ipin role That's why it was delayed about 8 months From the original schedule And then we use uh, My wife, dia nak lagu Dia kan pun nak bila Hindustan So dia nak lagu So dia kata dia nak harmonika So dia nak pakai itu So I kena cari itu 
So we ask itu to do the the uh, the song dalam tu kan. Uh, pasal dia nak Amerika. So cerita dia bila kita suruh itu buat dia bawa oh, kita kata tak sedap. You kena ubah ini ni. Dia pun buat. Lagi sekali datang kata tak tak best you kena masuk ni. Haji buatlah sendiri. Atau you panggil yang nasin. Buat kata. Ah, uh, atole me eh. Bila orang cakap tak sedap, tak sedap lah kan Kau daripada muda sampai tua buat lagu Bila peminat cakap tak sedap, kau kena dengar So, dia dah nak give up lah But we call save untuk doing it And it become famous uh, Tapi, because some problem we say I don't market the song Tapi sekarang, I simpan song Dia frust lah, tak boleh <laughs> Kalau tidak, song tu famous eh. uh, Macam cerita, uh, lagu apa? Uh, Sahabat Selamanya There was, uh, we do it with Padi from Indonesia uh, Asalnya kita nak buat lagu Untuk uh, orang Indonesia So kita bagi perumatan pada Indonesia Pasal OPP ni famous di Indonesia So I want to see Ahmad Dhani uh, Suruh so dia buat lagu uh, untuk OPP Tapi Ahmad Dhani dia buat lagu uh, terlalu rock uh, Pergi rumah dia, dia tunjuk kan So, saya cakap, this is not a big big song Saya cakap, Haji If you want a hit song You mesti lagu kayak gini Eh Saya cakap, eh hey, Mat Saya nyuruh kamu bikin lagu Untuk Ubi Nipin Bukan lagu untuk kamu <laughs> So, tak jadi buatkan dia And then I was recommended to see Padi So I met Fadli, Fadli So suruh dia buat lagu And then he was at that time under Sony Music So the MD of Sony said Pak, kalau suruh Fadli bikin lagu ha, Good luck, 2 tahun baru keluar <laughs> Kenapa? Tak tahu dia kata. Slow <laughs> But what happened uh, within one week The song come out Seminggu keluar lagu tu Uh, then we found out Rupanya anak dia jadi director Setiap pagi anaknya bangun Pak, udah siap lagu Bibi <laughs> Anaknya waktu itu baru 6 tahun Setiap pagi dia bangun Pak, mana lagu Bibi Itu masa dia buat So, dia datang ke studio kita Empat kali So, every time My wife comment Masuk ini, naik ini Dan dia tak pernah rasa marah Very nice. That's why the song beautiful. It become a big hit uh, in Malaysia also in Malaysia. So ini filem ni memang terkenal lah. Uh, dan dia pernah ditayangkan di India dalam bahasa Hindi di 12 uh, bandar. Tapi biasalah kita bukan pandai nak buat cerita macam India kan. Dia tak hit lah. Tapi it was uh, dub in Hindi Dan dia main di panggung di Indonesia also So ini ada cerita kan Ubi Ipin ni diambil daripada filem gang uh, Sebenarnya kita buat Ubi Ipin ni untuk test How good our animation And we released it in 2007 on uh, TV9 During Ramadan So, 2008 kita buat lagi 12 episod Release on TV 9 And then it become popular Baru kita release filem Gang Tahun 2009 uh, Then, when we finish doing the film I have 40 staff What project? What is the next project? So, I kata kita fikir panjang lah Buat Ubi Pit tu jadi series So, dari 5 minit We change the format to 7 minit Because 7 minutes, 3 episode become half an hour program So sampai sekarang kalau you tengok Dia ada episode 1, 2, 3 Satu cerita nah, Kita akan buat Dalam filem, that's the easiest Because pick dia sekali Tiap-tiap episode tu dia suspend dia sekali Habis Kalau you buat movie Normally there are 3 pick Uh, filem ni pun macam you belajar uh, Matematik semua, dia ada formula juga 
the first 10 minutes the scene must depict what is the problem the filler want to solve dan siapa yang you teka jadi villain siapa yang jadi hero so scene tu mesti keluar at the 10 minutes nah mengikut kajian apa tu uh, Hollywood daripada beratus beribu-ribu filem yang berjaya dia ada act 1, act 2, act 3 so act 1 tu yang ke 10 minit tu mesti keluar scene dia lepas tu act 2 tu is the climax where penonton semua teka inilah yang menyebabkan masalah tapi bila sampai je dekat situ salah tekaan kamu haa uh, Kalau you boleh buat macam tu Then the film was We become famous So act 3 tu dia penyudah lah Dia akan reveal siapa yang The real hero, the real villain So that's how it had to be done So BB become the television series so, Ini masa kita launch film tu uh, This is Alam Anda Dekat Mid Valley tu If you remember uh, McDonald tu eh? Orang tak boleh masuk McDonald Begitu ramai orang beli tiket The huge popularity dia So From the beginning We say we become IP creator Kita tak ambil kerja orang Walaupun orang datang nak suruh kita buat Kita tak mau Because when you become IP You own the IP You can create a lot of business around it Kalau you popular lah So 2007 kita keluar kat Upipin 2010 bila uh, Arwah Cik Wari pindah daripada TV9 dia berhenti dia buka dia set up TV Alitra dia requested me to come up with an animation series so kita keluarkan pada zaman dahulu so pada zaman dahulu ni very popular uh, di Indonesia juga tapi tak sepopular Upipin uh, kita buat 4 siri Siri keempat uh, uh, Cik Bo meninggal Dan ganti dengan the new uh, Orang Yang orang baru tu dia tak nak beli lagi So we discontinue making it yeah. Tapi mungkin tahun ni kita start balik yeah. Because in Malaysia There's a lot of demand for this <coughs> Then Dadu Nido uh, We always do this episode One and a half minute Silent movie uh, We do it for YouTube Pass untuk YouTube And in our company Is the time we test new director Siapa yang ada potential jadi director Dia direct this film uh, One and a half minute dia Tak ada dialogue So they come up with story semua Tapi bila dia show it to me and my wife uh, Kita tengok kita tak gelak ke Kita tak sedih ke And then dia start nak cakap oh, Actually uncle Kita nak uh, You fail We buat balik because silent movie you don't have to explain orang tahu so kita hanya tunjuk this on youtube kita tak jual ke mana and then putri siapa ingat so kita keluarkan 2014 di TV3 so the first run dia main lepas news at night 9 o'clock kita buat ini pun 7 minit so it was a such hit a big hit uh, in Tokyo, we want the best uh, Asian character Tahun 2015 During the Tokyo Game Show, kita menang uh, This one have a lot of potential Lepas dia main kat TV, uh, TV3 Kita pergi kenanga, wholesaler, a lot of baju ini, Putri ini From Disney, dia cakap And Disney did offer a way to take this Tapi kita tak jual uh, InsyaAllah lepas kita buat filem kita ni siap We going to do filem on Putri Ramai orang tunggu lah Especially uh, girls uh, waiting for Putri Okay uh, Facebook kita support 12.4 million uh, followers uh, Banyak uh, 70% are Indonesian So kita tahu aja apa benda Kejap lagi beribu komen Semua dari Indonesia <laughs> Okay. Uh, dekat sana so famous uh, Ini dekat Bali uh, Bila istiadat apa tadi dia panggil Dia ada semayang dia kan uh, Dia jadi kat Ubi Bin 
Tuhan dia Dia harap Ini betul Ini bukan tipu uh, Ini Upin Ipin Pengikut setia uh, Ini bukan orang Indonesia Budak uh, Sepang Tapi sekarang dia dah form 1 Dari kecil kan Anywhere kita buat carnival dia ada So kita kata panggil dia So kita bayar dia sekolah semua eh. Sekarang dia dah besar uh, Ini Tak sihat saya di Bandung Dia jual tepi jalan Semua patung dia Tahun 2009 bila Upi Pin start masuk sana It's a big big business Sampai Raja Indonesia anggarkan Sekitar setahun lah Dalam 120 million uh, Worth of business Generated from Upi Pin So bila Menteri dia tanya Saya bagaimana ini kan Sana kan uh, Indonesia susah buat business tau Because dia punya copyright law Tak sama dengan kita Sana copyright law dia is right to copy So susah kita nak buat business So bila menteri dia tanya Di mana nampak ini Ya gak apa-apa bu We share the wealth Kita share the wealth Dia happy lah